Hi, I'm Emily. Welcome to Holding the Sticks, a hockey-themed fiber arts podcast. Hello everyone and welcome to my living room. Like I said, my name is Emily. I'm also known as Shanti Dragon on Ravelry and Emily3022 on Twitter. So if you need to contact me for any reason, those are the best places to get me. I'd like to introduce myself before I get started with the podcast. Just It's my first time here and I thought y'all would like to know a little bit about me. I am a crocheter and knitter and a spinner. I've been doing uh, fiber arts for many years. I started as a crocheter as a teenager and then wanted to learn how to knit cables. So I learned how to knit about five years ago. And I didn't know back then that you could also cable with crochet, but uh, I still haven't learned that technique. I would like to. Um, Crocheting hurts my wrist a little bit, so I don't do it as often as I knit. And um, I learned how to spin probably three years ago. I started on a drop spindle and did that for about two years and then I purchased my Ashford Traveler Rosie about a year and a half ago. So I do enjoy the spinning. I'll be talking about that some in the podcast. I never thought that I would call myself this, but I am also a runner. I ran my first 5K back in October. And for those of you who know me in real life, you know this was quite a feat. I was the ultimate couch potato back before I started training for that 5K. And believe me, I'm more surprised than anyone that I actually enjoy running. (laughs) I'll be talking about that some in the podcast, too. I am a massage therapist by trade. I work full-time as a massage therapist, or as full-time as you can as a massage therapist. 40-hour weeks are very rare for massage therapists just because of the wear and tear that it puts on your body. It's hard to work a full 40-hour week, although there are a few of us that do it. I will be um, sharing some of my experiences as a massage therapist with you in the podcast. I am a writer. I don't know how much I'll be sharing about my writing. I haven't written in a little while. Uh, When I do write, it's fiction. I write a lot of fantasy, and it's usually romantic. I love tea, so you will almost always see me with a a mug or a cup of tea. Today I'm using my snowman mug that my grandmother gave me. These always come out right around Christmas time and then they get put away right after. But I've got some black ginger tea in here from Orientspiration. Unfortunately, Orientspiration went out of business several months ago, so that makes me sad, but that just means I have to find a new place to buy tea from, which means I get to try more tea. (laughs) So that's not such a bad thing, is it? (laughs) I really enjoy music a lot, so um, I may share a little bit about that. Um, And also, I live in a really amazing place. I live in the Blue Ridge Mountains of North Carolina. The nearest town to me is Boone, North Carolina. That's the home of Appalachian State University, which I graduated from back in 1999. Never could leave the region after I graduated. I just fell in love with the area. So here I stay. Um, You'll see a lot of pictures and video, I'm sure, of the surrounding beauty around my house and just in the region here. Um, Try to spend some time out there and enjoy the mountains. So a little bit about the podcast and how it will be laid out. I'm going to um, structure this podcast like a hockey game. It will be done in three periods, plus a little post game. So the first period will be called In the Zone, and that's where I'm going to talk about my fiber arts, the projects that I'm doing, um, the projects that I finished, uh, things that may be coming down the pike, um, just different, anything related to the fiber arts is what I'll talk about in the first period. And in the second period, I will talk about my fitness journey and also um, maybe some self-care tips for knitters and crocheters and spinners. 
uh, anything having to do with muscle health for you. That uh, second period will be called in the training room. And the reason I'm calling it in the training room is that a hockey team will usually have a training room. It's attached to their locker room, typically, and it is where they will work out and do their fitness training, but it's also where they will have their recovery work, massage, you know, ice baths, um, things like that. So that's where I will put that information. The third period is where I will talk about hockey. So um, the reason I'm doing the, um, the setup the way that I am is so that people can skip the portions that they're not interested in. So if you're not a hockey fan, um, you'll still enjoy the podcast, but if you don't want to hear me blabber about the Charlotte Checkers and the Carolina Hurricanes and the NHL lockout, then you can skip the third period and not have to hear any of that. <laughs> And then after that, I will have some post-game chatter where I just talk about whatever. I'll have some chirps and chants, things that I love and things that I don't like so much. Um, just general uh, chatter like you would at a knitting circle or whatever that you would talk about with your friends. So, if y'all are ready, let's go on and get into it. All right, let's get this first period underway. I'm gonna start out with developing play. These are the projects that I'm currently working on as far as knitting or crochet goes. I have two knitting projects on the needles right now and um, several more in the wings ready to come on the ice, but I'm not gonna talk about those today. Try to keep it a little short. So first, I wanted to show you the shawl that I'm working on. I don't do a lot of lace, especially not lace weight. In fact, I believe this is the first big lace weight project I've ever done. So the first project that I'm working on is called Nidaria. It is by Anna Sudo, and it is a beautiful shawl. And I wish I had printed out a picture of it. I just realized I hadn't done that. But um, you'll get a pretty good idea of what it'll look like after I show you, I hope. It just has this one flower-like motif here at the, oops, I'm showing you the wrong side. There we go. This is the fanciest part of the shawl. Let's see here. Hopefully you can see that pretty well. And then it just radiates out the, the um, kind of chevron lace, just goes all the way out to the edges of the shawl, and it's sort of a half circle scalloped shawl. And I will link to that in the show notes so you can look at the finished objects in Ravelry. I'm knitting this with Knit Picks Shadow Kettle Dyed, and that's a lace weight yarn, obviously. It's in the wine color. I guess it's really a colorway because it is tonal. And I'm doing that on a size 2 needle, or that's 2.75 millimeters. And the next project that I'm working on are the Fair Isle Ski Band and Mittens. Actually, I'm only doing the mittens. It's a pattern that was put out by Peyton's. It doesn't have the designer's name anywhere that I could find. So um, I have finished one of these mittens. And I am actually knitting these to wear to hockey games. The two teams that I watch are the Hurricanes and the Checkers. Both teams share the same colors. Makes it nice and convenient for me. I'm wearing a Checkers shirt today. Um, the colors are red, black, and white. And um, I didn't want to, for my first real color work project, I didn't want to start with three colors. So I went with just the red and the white. And those will be nice and warm when I'm sitting in the arena because my hands always get cold in there. They usually keep it about 50, 55 degrees in the arena. The closer you sit to the ice, in my experience, the colder it is. So there's that one. And then I've gotten this far on the second one. And these have kind of been put on hold because I'm doing a lot of holiday knitting right now. Um, so anything for me has kind of been put on the back burner. I'm sure you all know how that goes. So that's all I have for knitting, but I do have some spinorama going on. I've been working on the Spackle Knit Along with the Knit More Girls podcast, if y'all have heard of that. Um, 
the idea was to spin a sweater's quantity of yarn and then knit the sweater before the end of 2012. Well, I'm still spinning, <laughs> so I'm not going to be able to knit this sweater by the end of the year, but I'm still really enjoying the experience. Um, unfortunately, um, having two pounds of fiber to spin up, this is all that I have spun since May, except for a little bit that I've done on my spindle. And I'm really ready for the spinning part of this to be done because, well, I'll show you. This fiber is also from Knit Picks. It's the Knit Picks Wool of the Andes. Um, roving and this is in the Merlot color and what I do this is one of the, one of the finished skeins that I have so I am getting nearer to the end <laughs> the end is in sight so it's showing the color pretty pretty accurately it's just a heathered reddish brown yarn I wanted something neutral so that I could wear the sweater a lot um, in retrospect, I wish I had gone with maybe a pink or something like that, just to keep my interest a little bit more. But so that's what the finished yarn looks like. I am spinning it up. Let's see where I am. I'm spinning it up one ounce at a time. So I put it. I separated it into these little, these little one ounce balls here, bird nests or whatever you would like to call them, and. I spin them up one ounce at a time and I put each ounce on a toilet paper roll because I just that's the way I roll. <laughs> I didn't want to spend a lot of money on extra bobbins. I know you can get uh, weaving bobbins and things like that. I figured out a way to what I do is I um, use my ball winder to roll the single off of my bobbin onto the ball winder and then I slide it onto my toilet paper rolls and then I can store a whole bunch of them and then I mix them all up when I'm done with all of the spinning so that the plies will stay um, it'll, it'll even out the plies because usually if you're like me when I start to spin my um, I start out and it's real real thin and then as I spin along it gets thicker and thicker because you want get, to get it done or sometimes it goes the other way around where you start out real thick because you're not used to the fiber and then as you get used to it um, your spinning gets thinner and thinner. So if you mix up your bobbins at the end and apply that way, hopefully you'll come out with a more even yarn. I'm doing this in a three ply, a true three ply. I'm a real big fan of Navajo plying, so this is a kind of a, not a new experience for me, but it's a different experience than I usually have with my spinning. There's really, I didn't think any point in Navajo plying um, yarn that's all going to be in one color. So. That's my spinning. I think I have about seven more skeins of this to go and then I'll be done. Um, I think I'm getting about maybe 150 to 200 yards on each one. So there's that. And now um, we'll go on to She Shoots, She Scores. These are my finished objects. So in the last week, mm, week or two, I have finished the following knitting projects. I haven't finished any spinning obviously um, and I haven't done any crocheting. I did some a little bit last month for my sister who just um, moved into her first apartment um, with her significant other and she needed some dishcloths and some uh, pot holders. So I, I didn't take any pictures of those unfortunately before I sent them but if I can get her to take pictures I'll have um, I'll have her send them to me and I'll put them on the podcast so you can see. I really do crochet too. <laughs> anyway, my um, finished objects are, first of all, I finished what should I, I should have used this as my crazy cow entry because this was a really crazy project. I did the Ingleside Scarf by Katie White. It's a free pattern on Ravelry and um, I really love the way this turned out. So here it is. It's an infinity scarf. So it's just one big loop here. And you could double it over and wear it more like a cowl. I used Cascade Heritage Silk Paints yarn. It's fingering weight. The color is 9996. We get real creative with those Cascade colors. Bought it at my local yarn shop, um, Black Bear Books, at the Boone Mall. 
they have a little knitting store in with their bookstore. I love that place. It's really great. I use size 6 needles. That's a 4 millimeter for those of you not in the United States. And the reason why I say this should have been my crazy cow entry is that it may look pretty kind of plain, but this entire infinity scarf was knit with a twisted rib. So every knit and every purl, it was one by one ribbing, every stitch was twisted. By the time I finish this, I think I have forgotten how to do a normal knit and purl stitch. <laughs> and when I started doing my next project, I had a really hard time <laughs> trying to do it correctly. But I really love, like I said, the way this turned out. The drape is wonderful. I think I, partially because of that stitch, the twisted stitch, and partially because of the silk content in this yarn. Love it. And I hope the person who's getting this for Christmas will love it too. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, my camera stops every 10 minutes and I had let time get away from me. So hopefully I'll be able to make that a smooth transi transition somehow. So I'll start over again with the um, dishcloth that I'm working on. My second finished project is the All Washed Up Cloth by Jill Arnish. And it is made with peaches and cream in the Lotus Blossom colorway. Here we go. Let's see if we can get the color. The color's pretty true. I used a size 7 or 4.5 millimeter needle for that. So that's more Christmas knitting. You can never have too many dishcloths on hand to give away as um, gifts to people you may not have thought of. Co-workers, neighbors that drop in, um, things like that. I like to have a few of them on hand for that. So there's that. And my final finished object is there's actually two of them, but I'll just show you one because they're identical. <laughs> I made a couple of Christmas stockings. And um, the pattern for these was Knitted Christmas Stockings by Joy Green. I knitted these out of Red Heart. And um, I know I forgot to tell you, I knitted the, um, those colorwork mittens out of Red Heart as well. Red Heart and Vanna's Choice <laughs> for those. I don't typically use those yarns a lot, but you know, for some things, those are the way to go, in my opinion. Anyway, this is... The Knitted Christmas Stockings by Joy Green. I used a size 8 needle, 5 millimeters. I modified this pattern to knit it in the round because it's just easier for me. It was like knitting a ginormous sock instead of, you know, having to figure out the back and forth and everything. So, these are really big. I don't know if I can fit it in the frame. This is for my stepdad. And... My nephews call him Paw Paw, so that's why it says Paw Paw at the top. <laughs> and here it is, it's big. And I actually still need to steam block this. This just came out of the dryer. I just haven't gotten to the steam blocking yet because you see how that's pulling in there at the heel. But I thought those were cute, so I thought I would share them with you. That does it for the first period. All right, it's time for some second period action here in Emily's living room. <laughs> second period, like I said, is called training room. And today in the training room, I thought I would just share a little bit about um, my journey in fitness and also how I became a massage therapist. I'll start with my fitness journey. Some of you may know me from um, the Girlfriends Knitting podcast group. Um, I started last spring when Carolyn, the host of Girlfriends Knitting, decided she wanted to run a 5k and she started trying to get her group members involved in running a, um, a heart walk or a heart run sometime in the fall and we all decided we would train together for this 5k run. I've been thinking about running a 5k for quite some time, a couple of years, but still I was still sitting on the couch. <laughs> sitting and knitting on the couch and I was not very active at all. Now my work is active obviously but um, there's no replacement for getting out there and getting your heart rate up and um, you know really working out. But anyway I started training for my first 5k back in I would say May. And now what happened that finally kicked my butt into doing something was I had a doctor's appointment 
just a routine physical. I went in, they took my blood pressure. It was through the roof. It was very high. They were very concerned. <laughs> they said, you need to do something. Here, take this pill. And you need to cut back your sodium. You need to get active. We need to bring this down or you're gonna wind up in the hospital or worse. So, I don't like taking pills. I really, I'm not a fan. Uh, I took my pills. The doctor gave me this prescription and I have been obediently taking it ever since. And, you know, she's been checking up on me throughout, you know, every few months I go back in and she is hopeful that I won't have to take the pill forever. But there are worse things than taking a pill anyway. <laughs> but that's what got me out there and running. I did not want to have to take a pill for the rest of my life. So I went out and went on the internet and found the training program for Couch to 5K. I will link it in my show notes. It was at the Cool Runnings website. And I decided I was going to start doing this if it killed me. <laughs> I thought I would absolutely hate it. Now the first couple times I went out to run, I just wore whatever athletic shoes I had at the time. I think they were some um, Danskin uh, Walmart shoes that I just had. So for the first two weeks or so, I would do the interval training from couch to 5k. Interval training is where you run for a while, then you walk for a while, then you run for a while, you go back and forth, and then as you progress along the training, you run more and you walk less. So um, that was a bad idea to start in those shoes. I wound up giving myself a nice case of bursitis in my knees, so I had to take a few weeks off. But by the time I had to take that time off, I was hooked on running. I loved it, y'all. I'm just as surprised as anybody, but um, I didn't feel right. I had to stop for about three weeks. I couldn't run at all. I had to rest it. That was, that's the only treatment for bursitis is rest, ice, and ibuprofen. <laughs> so I was doing all of those things. And um, about to go crazy because I had become used to that endorphin rush from the run. Um, I was starting to feel better. My blood pressure was starting to come down. And um, I just wanted to get back at it. So I went and I bought some real running shoes. I went to a um, sporting goods store near me and just bought the ones that felt the best. And um, that made a huge difference when I started running again. I haven't had any more trouble with my knees aside from just the routine soreness that you get um, when you're trying to increase your distance and that kind of thing. I'm now regularly running, and I can't believe this, three miles at a time. Uh, I do it at least once a week the three miles. Uh, typically I will try and work out four to six times a week. Um, this time of year since the weather got cold and the days are shorter I am doing some training on a um, stationary bike because it's just easier to get that in but I'm still running at least a couple times a week so um, I ran three miles yesterday and it's still just surreal to me to hear those words coming out of my mouth because six months ago I couldn't run a quarter of a mile. I couldn't run, I couldn't run a hundred feet without just feeling like I would die. So uh, I feel incredible. I've lost 22 pounds. I didn't start this to lose weight. I started it just to get healthy. The weight loss is just like a, a bonus, I guess. Um, the only bummer is I really hate shopping for clothes and uh, all my clothes are too big now. <laughs> But that's not really a problem, is it? <laughs> I'll just have to suck it up after Christmas and go out there and, and buy some new clothes. <laughs> I've, I've bought a few little things, but, um, you know, it's not my thing. Shopping is not my thing, unless it's for yarn. <laughs> as far as my journey as uh, a massage therapist and how I became one, as I mentioned earlier, I graduated from Appalachian State University back in 1999, and everybody's always surprised. Um, to find out that I have a college degree and that, and that I choose to work in the field that I work in. I love being a massage therapist. I hope I'll be able to do it until I'm 95 years old. Um, I feel like it's what I was put on this earth to do. But anyway, what happened is my degree was in sociology. What are you going to do with an undergraduate sociology degree? There's really nothing you can do. So I wound up working at the local hospital in a clerical position for eight years after I graduated from college. 
and uh, by the end of that eight years I was ready to move on. Um, I was so stressed out and I had developed some pretty bad lower back problems. I was also training in a kung fu class at the time and my kung fu master had um, asked me about my back pain. It was so bad that I couldn't sleep more than two hours without having to get up and move around um, because I was in so much pain. So he referred me to a classmate of mine and to get a massage. And I went to that appointment kicking and screaming. I did not want some person touching me. I, you know, I thought massage was frou-frou and for rich people and yada yada yada. But I went anyway and I'll tell you what, within five minutes, that classmate of mine had me sold. I was, I felt like a, a baby being cradled. It was amazing. The profound relaxation that I experienced, I was immediately hooked. <laughs> and I always tell my clients now, I used to be a user, but now I'm a dealer. Because <laughs> now I'm a massage therapist myself. I think within two months of that first massage, I had decided I wanted to go to massage school and become a massage therapist. It took me about a year. I was going to school full time and working full time, um, which was quite an adventure for about a year. And of course, had to take licensure exams and everything else. It was a pretty intense program. You can do it in six months in North Carolina. I can't imagine getting all of that information in my head in six months though. So that's just a little bit about my journey fitness-wise and massage therapy-wise. So let's end this second period and get on into the third. All right, let's drop the puck for the third period and a little bit of hockey talk. Now I have to apologize to all of you hockey fans out there. I am an unapologetic Carolina Hurricanes fan and Charlotte Checkers fan. I don't have access to a whole lot um, of hockey information regarding other teams. Now I've got favorite players on other teams and things like that. But unfortunately, my hockey talk will probably be mostly centered on my two favorite teams. Um, down here in the South, uh, we don't get a lot of coverage on, uh, you know, TV or anything like that. I read a lot of hockey blogs, so I kind of know in general what's going on out there in the big wide hockey world. But for the most part, here I will talk about my teams. So, this week I'd like to talk a little bit about the NHL lockout. <laughs> Now, for those of you who are hockey fans, I think we're, all of us are pretty much on the same page at this point. We're fed up with both sides and we just want to see some hockey. The good thing about what's going on though is NHL is not the only game in town. We have other options for other hockey to watch. I've been hearing a lot on Twitter about NCAA college games being televised. I highly recommend you take some of those in um, live if you can. We don't have any NCAA in my area or on TV. I've heard they've been some really great games. I unfortunately don't get the channels on my television that they've been broadcast on. But um, from the tweets that I have been seeing, it's been some really great action going on. So there is NCAA. There are ECHL hockey teams in different towns. Those are not usually televised, but check out and see if there's a team near you. That's some great hard-hitting hockey from what I understand. My personal um, saving grace on this lockout year is that I have always been a Charlotte Checkers fan. And the Charlotte Checkers are the um, top minor league affiliate for the Carolina Hurricanes. They are an a American Hockey League team, that's AHL team, so of course they're playing this year with several of the guys who were on the Hurricanes last year. Uh, since the lockout is on, they've come down to play with the minor league. Um, one of those guys is Justin Falk. Uh, we've also got Drayson Bowman. Um, Zach Boychuk and Zach Dolphy are both players that have spent some time at the NHL level but haven't quite broken in yet but they're both on our team. Justin Peters 
was the backup goalie for the Hurricanes um, for several years. He backs up Cam Ward usually, and he's playing. He's one of our starting goalies this year for the Checkers. So um, we've got a great team this year. They got off to a really good start. They're not doing so well currently. <laughs> the last couple of weeks for my Checkers have been a little bit uh, not so good. <laughs> um, they played o the Oklahoma City Barons last weekend. And the Oak City Barons have players like Ryan Nugent Hopkins, um, Taylor Hall, uh, Jordan Eberle. And um, those are pretty well-established NHL caliber guys. So um, I'm not making excuses for my team. We have our NHL caliber guys too. But um, yeah, I wish I could have seen especially Saturday's game live because from what I heard of the radio call from Jason Shia, the voice of the Charlotte Checkers, that was a crazy good game. <laughs> the Sunday game following that, however, was a blowout and my Checkers pretty well got stomped. So kudos to you, Oklahoma City Barons. That's just the way hockey goes. <laughs> the other thing I wanted to, oh, I wanted to uh, mention Justin Falk last night. Um, playing the Rockford Ice Hogs. They played uh, the Ice Hogs Saturday and Sunday this past weekend. And uh, again, were beat both times. But um, yesterday, Justin Falk um, got hit in the face with a puck. And in true hockey player fashion, had to post a picture on Twitter. I will try to link that in my show notes if you have a strong stomach. <laughs> I believe he lost several teeth. And um, just the wound on his face here was quite nasty <laughs> so there's that here's hoping for a quick recovery for justin he's a tough kid i bet he'll be back on the ice next time the puck drops so that's it for the third period and a little bit of hockey talk all right it's time for some post game chatter I've already had my first technical difficulties, and it's only my very first podcast, so there you go. That's just the way it is when you podcast, I guess. I've watched enough to know that um, these things happen. This last segment here just got corrupted and wouldn't add on to my movie, so I am re-recording it. It is now evening. My husband is home. Um, he is in the other room playing some music, so if you can hear that, I'm sorry. Um, Speaking of ambient noise, I should mention I do have two dogs <clears throat> in the house with me. Kelly is my husky German Shepherd mix. We adopted her from a shelter several years ago. And Bumble is our Jack Russell Rat Terrier mix. And we got her as a gift from my husband's dad. So they're my babies. And I'll insert a picture of them here. So there you go. <laughs> Those are my girls. Um, you may hear them jingling their collars or chewing a bone or you know, just doing doggy things from time to time when I'm podcasting. Since I recorded this morning, I have cast on another dishcloth here with some more peaches and cream. It's just a grandmother's favorite. Um, so I don't know what the colorway is, but it's pretty. It's got um, cream and brown and some orange in there. So, I like it. Um, the lighting is not as good now, of course, because the daylight is all gone. I'm sitting here in my living room, which I just finished decorating for Christmas. I love this time of year. I love um, the decorations. I um, have two nativity scenes out, and that's one of my favorite things about Christmas. We follow the Catholic tradition of uh, the nativity scene, where we don't put baby Jesus in the scene until Christmas morning and also our three wise men are not with the nativity yet they travel across the surface wherever they are and arrive on January the 6th so um, I used to have them travel all the way across my living room to the manger scene on the 6th but now um, space is a little tight so they're just on the other side of the counter. <laughs> so they didn't come from quite as afar. <laughs> so.
So uh, along with this time of year also comes social obligations, something I'm very much not good at. I'm very much a homebody and I don't really enjoy parties and get-togethers, but this year I have told myself that I really need to make an effort to get out there and be a part of things. So um, my husband last week told me he would like for me to go to a party with him. And it's tomorrow night. It's at a, a fancy restaurant up in Blowing Rock, which is another town nearby. So I'm kind of dreading it, but hopefully I'll have a good time and it'll make for, uh, for want, making me want to do more of that. Um, also coming up, I've got a work Christmas party. I'm actually really looking forward to that because um, I love the people I work with, so I think it'll be a lot of fun. Last weekend, we had some visitors. I was supposed to have three visitors, but we wound up only having one. My friend Rob came up from Hickory, and we had found an antique clock for him at a local consignment shop. So he came up to check out the clock, and I wish I had gotten a picture. It is so beautiful. He wound up buying it. And Rob has a collection of antique clocks. They're really cool. And I recently inherited a clock from my grandmother, which I'm sure you have heard chiming throughout the podcast. The um, clock that does the Westminster chime, that one's a newer clock. But the one that just has the gong sound, that was Grandma's. So um, Rob helped us get Grandma's clock up and running. He didn't do any um, changes to it. He didn't do any repairs. He just looked and made sure everything was in order before we wound it up and didn't, you know, let it go. So that's also the clock that you hear ticking loudly in the background. It's Grandma's clock. Other than that, I think that's about it for today. So until next time, May your projects and your favorite hockey teams stay out of the penalty box. Bye-bye.